even without Snowfall Guardian, Shaman still has the potential of reaching rank 1 legend. Meaty was able to reach rank 1 legend with his take of Control Shaman with a 69%. Nice. But he posted these stats on the first day of the patch, and I think it's absolutely impossible for someone to play over 100 games during the first patch. And I know for a fact that Meaty was playing this deck before the patch even started, because he thought that Shaman was a tier 1 deck even before Dongrasp and Guff got nerfed. But needless to say, Needy is still killing it with this deck and this new meta, and I think Shaman is only in a better position now that these hero cards have been nerfed. But the reason why this is important to note is because Shaman is able to stick a board very easily now. And if we take a look at the list, the only thing this deck really cares about is playing on curve and then playing the quote-unquote control strategy when it's most convenient. However, as simple as some curves may be, the real challenge of this deck is being able to pull out a win when you have absolutely nothing working for you in the early game. And this is when the quote-unquote control shaman elements can really shine. Because you're not fighting for tempo anymore, you're fighting for survival. So instead of using cards like Primordial Wave, Crud Caretaker, and Command of Neptalon in order to tempo out a board and get yourself ahead, you want to use these cards in order to pull yourself from behind. Primordial Wave is a great example of this concept because there are going to be a lot of times where you're thinking, why not just evolve the board that I already have? My opponent has two threats right now and I would like to get rid of them, so why not just upgrade my board while getting rid of some of their minions? Well, Primordial Wave can be useful as a literal win con depending on your matchups. And if you're against a deck like, say, Imp Warlock, you can actually have ways of just auto-winning games by denying the demons or any of the imps. But the real challenge of this deck is knowing when to throw out your minions or when to play the control style. And if you can tiptoe along that line, then you will do very well with this deck. I have already covered Control Shaman in a previous video, but just in case we have any new viewers that haven't been here before, go ahead and like this video and subscribe to the YouTube channel to be notified about any other future content. And as a thanks for doing that, let's go ahead and take a look at the general win cons of this deck. Because if you can't stick a board, there are other ways that you can win. It's just very difficult in order to set up some of these win conditions. The first win condition is extremely obvious. Sire Denathrius. I don't think I need to tell you how exactly to set up Sire Denathrius or the potential that this card has. The best way to get the most amount of damage out of this legendary is obviously to play Sire Denathrius and then have your Bolner macaw combos ready to go. Because as early as turn 10 if you have the coin and somehow you've set up this win condition to where it's going to deal enough damage, then you can get 3 Sire Denathrius triggers immediately if you have the best possible setup. However, let's be realistic. This win condition is not going to be how you win games. At best, you may be able to save Bolner and Macaw, or you might be able to save Bran with Macaw, but you really don't want to try and shoot for these strategies because it's more important for you to fight for tempo and get chip damage in while you can versus building up this gigantic combo that we all know can get Theotard. The second win condition of this deck is scamming the opponent, and there are several different ways of being able to do this. The first example that most people think of is the Goldshire Null Evolve mechanic. And for those of you that don't know, there's a possibility of summoning the Null on turn 2 and evolving it so that way you get a meaningful 10 drop. But this is the most obvious scam for people that have played this deck before. Other ways of being able to scam your opponent are through cards like Mutanus and Theotar, Primordial Wave, as well as potential school teacher high rules. The reason why I list these cards under the scam win condition is because every single one of these cards add a different element to be able to put your opponent at a massive disadvantage. Obviously Theotar and Mutanus have the possibility of stealing a key card from your opponent, but as I was discussing earlier, cards like Primordial Wave, if you save them for the right time, can literally turn the tides of the game in your favor. And the reason why I include School Teacher in this list is because of the combinations of Bran and Bolner that School Teacher and Nogglings can just abuse. And this is another reason why I don't believe that Bran should ever be nerfed, because if we make this card 4 mana, it just absolutely kills these kind of possibilities. And this is another reason why 2 mana Bolner is absolutely hilarious with School Teacher. One of the last win conditions available to you are your big minions as well as Burkhan. And the reason why I'm putting Burkhan here with the big minions is just simply due to the fact that he has a high mana cost. And the reason why these cards win is simply due to how big they can get, or how much value this deck can eventually snowball into. I've played against this deck several times and there have been a decent amount of games where Glug was just simply too much and smacked me for a lot of damage. 
Each of these big minions really give us a way of being able to close games, especially after we've spent most of the game fighting for tempo with our earlier curved cards. Because of cards like Glug and Insatiable Devourer, not only are you able to remove your opponent's cards, but you're able to develop tempo that's meaningful to yourself. And just like that, this deck has a thumbs up approval from Jay Alexander. But these big minions are not to be underestimated, especially Glug. I still see people talking about this card in such a negative way when I keep losing to this card over and over again. Never underestimate how a big swing like Glug or Insatiable Devourer can just automatically win games, especially in games against Druid where their ramping has been significantly nerfed. And that's another reason why this deck is performing so well. Its main weaknesses were nerfed, and now the metagame is evolving to where Shaman is favored into most of the archetypes uprising. Control Shaman is very dominant against the Rogue and Priest metagame. And currently in my experience, these are the two most popular classes outside of Shaman and Demon Hunter. The Relic Demon Hunter matchup is slightly unfavored, but the Ramp Druid matchup is a lot more even than what it used to be. So the nerfs to Druid really did help out Control Shaman. And same thing with Spooky Mage. Spooky Mage is now even more of a favorable matchup. Before, it was pretty even between the two classes. Maybe Big Spell Mage was a little bit more favored in Control Shaman due to the scam elements of the deck. But now Shaman is able to add Mage to its list of victims. So if you're able to find a lot of Priests, Rogues, and Mages, this might be the deck that you want to play. And it turns out this deck is also very good against the Hunter archetype due to the fact that you have a lot of ways of being able to stop them dead in their tracks either by freezing them in the face or by destroying their tempo. But the most important note to make is that Control Shaman doesn't have a matchup below 40%. Granted, this is data around the top 1000 legend ranks, so there are players that are playing very effectively. But not only is Control Shaman effective at the top ranks, my friend was able to go 19 and seven with this deck in the gold ranks to get him to platinum. So not only is this a deck that performs extremely well at the top legend ranks, this is a very effective deck that you can take to your own Legend Climb if you really wanted to. And speaking of Legend Climbs, this seems like a perfect time to talk about the Mulligan. According to Meaty, the best cards for you to keep are Schooling, Clownfish, Sleepbreaker, Bulner Heavenbeak, Wildpaw Caverns, as well as Muck Pools. And apparently it's only good to keep the Null on coin. And I was somebody that used to keep this card every time to try and hit the Evolve High Roll. But the reason why you only want to keep the Null on coin is because not only do you have a better chance of being able to tempo the Null and to get the Evolve value, there's a better chance that Null isn't just a dead card in your hand. The last thing that you want is for this card to stick around the 5-6 to six mana mark every single turn while you're building up your early curve. So I'd only recommend keeping Null on the coin in order to prevent this. The only other way that I would keep Null off coin is if I have Schooling available in hand, because this card is massive in order to give you the Null discounts. As I said earlier, there's a possibility of being able to play a 10 mana card as early as turn 2. And the way that you do this is on coin with Null and Schooling in hand. Turn 1, you play Schooling giving you 7 cards in hand. Then on your next draw, on turn 2, you will be sitting at 8 cards. Meaning that you can play Null into coin muck pools to give you the high roll. And this is just the easiest way in order to make people concede immediately. But the rest of the mulligan is centered around being able to build up tempo that your opponent has to answer immediately. Sleepbreaker is a great way of being able to stop early threats from being able to snowball you or to get meaningful trades. Clownfish obviously sets up for the Murloc high roll potential, and there is an argument to keep Gorlock Ravager in your hand if you're fighting a slow matchup and you already have Clownfish available, especially on coin. Bolner is another great way of being able to get insane Clownfish value, which is why if you have Clownfish and Gorlock Ravager available, being able to slap a Bolner on turn 2 to throw down the Clown is pretty freaking powerful. And I don't think I need to tell anybody why keeping Wildpaw Caverns and playing it on turn 3, turn 4 is also equally broken. And if we look at HS Replay, Goldshire Null sits at a 68% on both sides of the coin. But if we look at what happens when we get the coin, Goldshire Null shoots up to an 88.1%. But when we go first, Goldshire Null suddenly becomes a 39%. Not to mention that its mulligan win rate significantly decreases. But luckily this is only one card that changes off the mulligan thanks to the coin. Relatively speaking, the mulligan stays the same on both sides. But it's just interesting to see the data reflect this as well. Overall, I believe that Control Shaman is an extremely fair deck that you're going to be able to take to any rank that you wish. It's just a matter of being able to get the right draws and being able to play the right cards. But the thing that I love the most about this Control Shaman deck is that it really teaches you a lot of fundamental skills about Hearthstone. 
such as being able to fight for tempo, knowing when you're at a disadvantage and you have to go for a risk, as well as meaningfully building up a game plan throughout the entire course of the game. Because that's when I believe that Hearthstone is at its peak, when your entire deck is working in perfect harmony for a strategy that is often changing. But somehow, you stay on course, you don't get baited, and you throw out the cards exactly when you need it to, leading for a very satisfying victory. And if you would like to see the first satisfying victory that I had with this deck, I will go ahead and attach one of the first games that I played with this deck in order to show you that it's not too hard to learn. And as always, if you've enjoyed this deck guide, feel free to like this video and subscribe to the YouTube channel to be notified about any other future content we come out with. Thank you guys so much for making it to the end of this intro, and we'll see you for the next video. Um, rank one, Shaman. Okay, so we keep- we definitely keep the Wild Paw. I mean, not- not Muckpool, I already have the Muckpool. Give me a Schooling. Schooling and- and Noel would be amazing right now. Okay, well there- there's one part of the puzzle. So currently, I am 8-8 eight and eight with this deck. So let's make my score 8-8 eight and eight to reflect that. Nothing we need to do here. We'll just wait for the potential null value. Yeah, we gotta wait on this so that way we can actually play it sooner rather than later. You know what? No, I should play it now. Now that I've top decked the 4-drop, we definitely just throw it out. This turn, maybe it had some potential. But dude, it's freaking rogue. Like, they're gonna play a zero- uh, not, not a zero mana null, but they're just gonna play freaking uh, extortion or something. Hear a power into tooth. Or, or that. Or that, yeah. I, don't, I like the idea of not playing the ball near here. That's a pretty large minion. Yeah, this actually makes a lot of sense. This still gives me the turn 5 null play. I mean, there's no null that I can trade into, so I'm just going to evolve it into another 10. Hopefully hit something with Rush. Oh god, oh, this is a problem. I mean, if I hit Sire Denathrius, this could maybe work out. I mean, the thing about the null is that I can miss. Why would, why would I why would I risk this right now? And then I can also freeze his face, hello? This just wins the game now, right? I don't even need to do anything. What is he gonna do? Play another big minion, maybe? If he makes a big Draka, it doesn't it doesn't even matter, dude. Is he going for it? I mean, I guess if he makes a large enough stealth minion, sure. But there's no way. Hold on, let me let me click through this, and this doesn't take an eternity. You know what? Hold on a minute. I'm gonna grab some water while this guy while this guy flexes his muscles real quick. Hold on a minute. I'll be right back. Might as well use this opportunity, right? Oh, wait a minute, he stopped? And I can mill him? Let's go. I love the idea of being able to mill him here. He also gave me a coin. Give me, like, Denathrius or something. I mean, a 12-12 does get the job done. Uh, is there really a reason for me to play this minion? I guess the better question is, is there a reason for me not to play it? It is just an additional two damage. And maybe I can find, like, a, a fire elemental or something for extra damage. Or I can just pick this for freeze. I mean, who knows, man? I feel like this deck is actually really good against Rogue. Literally because of Wildpaw Cavern. Good thing I played it when I did. Yeah, nice job. I bet you wish you had a Battleground Battlemaster and somehow to also deal 10 damage for zero mana. Oh, crap. That is actually a big deal. Dude, oh my god, that's actually a huge deal. Wait, really? In death. Dude, really? In death. Oh my god, what? Oh, wow. Way to play your outs, I guess. Huh. Well, that just happened. Boop, boop, boop. Gives me for four. 
Do I really just have to hit freaking Burkhan? But on turn six, my opponents always have it, apparently. Dude, that's nuts. Oh, this, I thought we were winning. I thought we were winning. What happened? Who knows? Maybe I need a lesson with Meaty in order to figure out what the hell I did wrong here. At the same time, it doesn't look like he's really popping off that hard. All right. You know, this is fine. He's probably going to trade into the brand, right? No way you leave the no way you leave the brand alive. There's no way you leave the brand alive. Kill the brand. There is no way you leave the brand alive, sir, please. Thank you. I would have lost my mind if I lost to that. Taking this trade really doesn't give that much value, I guess. But I mean, it stops damage though. I have to stop damage. I can always just evolve this afterwards and it's the same thing. So yeah, we do we do it we do it this way. I need to hit a taunt though. Hit a taunt. Eh. This way we can at least stop Edwin. Oh, oh crap. Well, uh, uh, dude, just Burkhan me, man. I need, I need healing. I, I need Denat. Oh, dude, maybe I shouldn't use coin because Denathrius. At least, like, I could stop the Edwin play. So, like, these coins are kind of meaningless, right? Unless he decides to destroy it, which I guess is doable. Don't tell me you you have the Edwin, man. We know that he. Hold on a minute. We know that this is a, a shadow, right? Yeah, I don't, I don't remember how big this was. No way. Are you fucking me? Or, or, no way. No. Oh my god. Oh, oh my god. Are you for real? Because they made this card four mana again. Because they made this card four mana, he didn't just lower roll and hit like Shroud or something. Oh, you've got to be kidding me, dude. Oh my god, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> I think I think this is fine, actually. Wait, hold on a minute. Is this fine? Is this actually fine? Wait a minute. I think I can pop off with this instead. Okay, suddenly this isn't working the way I thought it would. Wait, this can give me healing though. And I can play it for free. Another amalgam. Oh wait, I'm fucking stupid. Why did I not? Oh my god. Why am? <laughs> Okay, you wanna know what? He's gonna he's gonna kill the battleground battle master anyway, unless he doesn't have lethal. Sketchy information. Jeez. He's finally low rolling. Let's go. Okay, he's still got tooth and wicked stabs though. Three mana Edwin was just so consistent, but at the same time, like, oh god, am I dead? Don't tell me I'm dead. Don't tell me I'm dead. No, don't do it to me. I'm alive. I am alive, and I have. One damage that I miss. Wait, no! There is no damage that I'm missing. Don't let up. There is no damage that I am missing. Wait, did I attack once with the ballman already? Yeah, I did. Okay, cool. BM. <laughs> the BM lethal. And I also hit this, which would have worked with the uh, the Amalgam of the Deep. Dude, let's go. Oh my god, what a clutch. What a clutch game. I thought we were boned, dude. I thought we were boned and we actually pulled that around. I, I made some questionable plays, but goddamn, let's go.